Mishnah, Leviticus 20, verse 10. This is the King James Version. And the man that committeth adultery with another man's wife, even he that committeth adultery with his neighbor's wife, the adulterer and the adulteress shall surely be put to death. As far as the grammar and the way that that sentence is written, there's really no problems there. It makes sense. But if you look at it in the Hebrew, this is a literal rendering, a literal rendering of the Hebrew. And a man who commits adultery with the wife of a man who commits adultery with the wife of his neighbor, he will die, the adulterer and the adulterer. Did you notice anything in there? See anything in there that looks kind of strange? Look at this portion of it. A man who commits adultery with the wife of a man who commits adultery with the wife. It's a repeating. Identical. This isn't Hebrew poetry. Hebrew poetry doesn't repeat the same thing twice. It repeats it two different ways. So it's not Hebrew poetry. Now here's how it looks in the Hebrew. The ish asher yinaf et eshet. Now this yellow is identical to the brown. Ish asher yinaf et eshet. It's the same. Identical. No changes. So what happened? When the scribe was writing his copy, he got to the word ish, he saw the word ish, and he continued on asher yinaf et eshet. He probably walked away when he dipped his ink in. Ish, and he's going back, but what happened was he's starting back over here. Ish asher yinaf et eshet, and then continues on with the verse. So he duplicated the text. This is very common in the text. There's actually quite a few of it. So now what we do is if we remove one of those, pull one of those accidental duplications out, now we have the ish asher yinaf et eshet, rehu mot yumat hanoef vehanafet. And a man who commits adultery with the wife of his neighbor, he will die. The adulterer and the adulteress. Are there errors in the Masoretic text? Yes, there are errors there. Do we want to take the Hebrew and take our scissors and cut that verse out? No, for two reasons. One is, we don't know where all of the errors are. We may think it's an error, but maybe it's not. We don't know. There are times where, you know... It could be, but it may not be. We don't know. And also, we, we want to preserve the text the way it is. And Judaism does still do that today. If there's an error, they still preserve it. And they continue on. Okay, in Better Sheet 4.8, from the King James Version, we have, And Cain talked with Abel his brother, and it came to pass, when they were in the field, that Cain rose up against Abel his brother and slew him. I don't see any problems there. That all makes sense. But if you look at it literally, And Cain said to his brother Abel, and they were in the field, and Cain rose up to his brother Abel, and he killed him. Is it missing anything? Yeah, it's missing what he said. There's nothing there. There should be something there. There has to be something there. But it's not there. So what happened? Most translations will fix the text like it did with the King James so that it sounds good. So it at least makes sense. And Cain talked with Abel. Well, that's the, the word biomer that would be in the Hebrew doesn't mean talked. It means, and he said, and then always follows what he said. But in the Greek Septuagint, the Septuagint is a Greek translation of the Hebrew that was done about 2,000 years ago. It's another source that we can use to pull from to try and help restore the original rendering. And guess what? It's in there. In the Greek Septuagint, it says, and Cain said to his brother Abel, let us go out into the field. But did they add that so it makes sense, or was that the original? Don't know. There's a lot of unknowns in textual criticism. There are some restorations we can be sure, like the one we looked at before. Psalms 145.13, if you open up your Bibles to this in the King James, you'll read, the king, Thy kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, thy dominion endureth throughout all generations. But if you pick up an NIV or an RSV, this is what you're going to get. The kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and thy dominion endures throughout all generations. The Lord is faithful in all his words and gracious in all his deeds. Well, what? The RSV and the NIV added a whole sentence? Well, remember, the King James was originally done 400 some odd years ago. The NIV and the RSV are fairly recent. They're actually after the Dead Sea Scrolls were found. Because the Dead Sea Scrolls are Hebrew that actually help correct the text, and we can find better understanding of the text based on the Dead Sea Scrolls. Chapter 145 of the Book of Psalms was called an acrostic. If I was doing this in English, it would be, apples are red, 
blueberries are blue, cherries are delicious red, whatever. I start each sentence with the next letter of the alphabet. Psalm 145 is an acrostic. Verse 1 begins with the aleph. Verse 2 begins with the bet. Verse 3 begins with a gimel. So we got aleph, bet, gimel, dalet, hey, vav. If anybody here knows the Hebrew aleph, bet, catch me. Aleph, bet, gimel, dalet, hey, vav, zayin, chet, tet, yod, kaf, lam, and mem, samach, ayin, pei, tzadi, kuf, reish, shen, tov. Mr. Nanun, that's right. There's only, there's only 21 verses in Psalm 145. How many verses should there be? 22, because there's 22 letters in the Hebrew alphabet. So it's missing a verse in the Hebrew. There, missing the letter noon. In the Dead Sea Scrolls, Psalm 145 is found there, and guess what? There's the missing noon. It has a whole sentence in there that when the scribe in the Hebrew, somewhere along the line, wrote out the verse that began with the mem, and then accidentally jumped to the verse that began with the samach, and skipped over the verse with the, with the letter noon. Okay, and that got perpetuated on copy after copy, which is why the Mesoretic text today is missing the letter noon. But the Dead Sea Scrolls is older or a different tradition. It has retained the verse with the letter noon in it. Devarim or Deuteronomy 32.8, when the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. That's what it says in the Mesoretic text. In, in other texts, it's, uh, and by the way, this is all other manuscripts. The Dead Sea Scrolls, the Septuagint, the Samaritan Pentateuch, the Aramaic Targums, all of the other texts say, when the most of the high divided to the nations their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the sons of God, B'nai Elohim. This is a clear case of religious biasness in changing the text on purpose. The Jews did not like this idea of the number of the peoples being according to the sons of Elohim. The angels would be a way of understanding that. They didn't like that, so they changed it to the sons of Israel because all other texts have sons of God. So there is not only some accidental changes within the text like we looked at, there are actually some changes that were made on purpose. 